belief grew into the cedars that we know today. A powerful force for good that helps thousands of kids across Nebraska. Belief grows. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Brown carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 Q in Lincoln. You're spending $300 a month. Binge drinking is the most common form of excessive drinking, which costs the United States more than $191 billion each year. By drinking less, you will save $300 a month. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with Samsung. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. This is Old School. Sponsored by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. Broadcasting veteran Derek Gearset. When you find something that moves, that, that makes them smile, celebrate. That's your task. That's your superpower. Nebraska Football Hall of Famer, Jay Foreman. Michael Jackson was just a pick-up by Foreman. He's a pick-up team. Can't find your score. On 9.7 Ticket and the Welcome to Old School, brought to you by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. Every type of meat and every type of cut. I'm Austin Norman, holding down the fort while Jay Foreman makes his way in. DP is out today. Stick with us here for the next couple hours, starting to drive home from work here shortly, I hope. Been a good day here on the ticket. Big thanks to Stricky. What a good show we just had during On the Block. If you missed any of it, you can check out wherever you get your podcast. Here in just a little while, uh, Spotify, Stitcher. Apple Music, Music, you name it, it it's, it's probably, probably out there. there. Uh, big, big thanks to the text line for uh, its work here, including letting, letting me know, know that this, this was well. unmuted. There we go. Let's mute it. Hopefully that's better. Big Bang Kank, really appreciate you uh, keeping an eye out there. L- let's get back into the text line here, 402-464-5685, if you've uh, got anything to say or add to this conversation. So in the conversation about Kentucky's head basketball coach, John Calipari leaving for Arkansas. Uh, Travis, Alabama fan, said, uh, big Bama fan here. Bama did get option one. Only offer that went out was to DeBoer. Plane went out that first night to Seattle, and it was Greg Byrne. No other coach was offered. Really? Really? I, I, I find that hard to believe. I honestly find it hard to believe that Kalen DeBoer was the only offer. Although, how about this? I find it more likely that Kalen DeBoer was the only offer. I highly doubt he was the first call. Highly doubt it. Do we know about some of these other calls? No, probably not that they happen. Absolutely. But I think we can infer with pretty good confidence that other calls happen. Think about the other extensions that were handed out at that point. I don't know if Lane Kiffin was a call. He doesn't scream Alabama to me. I think Lane's in the perfect spot. It'll miss. Um, Steve Sarkeesian, right? Tweeted out a little bit of a raise, a little bit of an extension for Sark at Texas, who, by the way, beat Alabama. Okay, so that's in there. And then the one that really stood out to me was Dan Lanning up at Oregon. You know, no, he never left his, his living room, right? Or his kitchen, wherever it was he posted that picture from up there in Eugene. But I would be floored if Alabama's people didn't call Lane Lane Kiffin's agent, if they didn't call Steve Sarkeesian's agent, and if they didn't call Dan Lanning's agent. Just because Kalen, I'm will again, I'm willing to believe that Kalen DeBoer was the only head coach to receive an offer for Alabama. Fine, I can I can be on board with that, but I'm sure. I, I believe very strongly that there were other calls made before the one to Kalen DeBoer and his agent. Because even if Kalen DeBoer is a great coach, I mean, he's won at every level, right? I think Alabama got a good one. 
He's won at D3. He's won in D1. He's been a coordinator. He's paid his dues. Had a nice little turnaround and you know, from the Jimmy Lake days up there at Washington. I'm a Kalen DeBoer fan. I think Alabama got a really good coach. Did Alabama get the best coach out there? I don't know. They didn't get Nick Saban 2.0. And I feel like just trying to put my Alabama cap on here to think through their process. Kalen DeBoer has done a pretty good job, you know, of, I don't want to say adapting. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways, let's, let's get back on track here. Kalen DeBoer is a good coach. He, he's done a good job climbing the ranks. There's where I was going with that. He's done a good job climbing the ranks. Again, D3 uh, coordinator, head coach, coordinator, head coach, right? He, he's, he's paid his dues. He's made his stops. But he comes with a certain risk profile, as does pretty much anyone trying to step into the Alabama football job. Maybe the bluest of blue bloods in college football, especially recently. If I'm an Alabama booster, if I'm an Alabama administrator, I would want a little different risk profile. I don't want to say Kalen DeBoer is a wild card because he has been incredibly consistent with how he's won and how he's built. But he's never had to handle a job like Alabama. Now, there aren't very many jobs like Alabama. Those candidates aren't necessarily out there. But Kalen DeBoer's Pac-12 is not Kalen DeBoer's SEC by any stretch of the imagination. Totally different beast, totally different monster. Alabama football, the conversations that happen both in public and behind the scenes might be similar just because they're both college football jobs, but they are not the same conversations that are happening. If I'm an Alabama booster, if I'm on their board of regents or trustees or I'm the president or athletic director, I want someone who's been at a high pressure job where football is king. I don't know what's king at Washington in terms of the university, but I also know Washington University isn't necessarily king out there anyways, right? It's Alabama football in the state of Alabama, at least on one half of the state. The other half of the state, sure, throw Auburn in that mix, but just like we've talked about with Nebraska before the Supernovas, of course, Alabama football is the pro team in that great state. Not the case at all up in Washington. There is no perfect candidate for any job ever. Okay, let's make sure that is abundantly clear. There is no perfect candidate for a job. Alabama wasn't going to find a Nick Saban 2.0. There's just not, right? At least not that we know of right now. Maybe Alabama should have taken more time to do its search, but in this day and age of the transfer portal and player movement and NIL, you want to have your guy in place. So I don't want to say Alabama settled for Kalen DeBoer. I, I don't want to make that insinuation at all. I think he's a really good coach. His profile, his risk profile, just doesn't fit what I think would be the first priority candidate for, uh, for Alabama, for where that program is at. Still really good, but not on top of the world. It's not Alabama's SEC anymore. It's Georgia's SEC. Alabama's the hunter, not the hunted. And maybe that's what, you know, makes Kalen DeBoer a good fit. Overlooked, um, hired over a couple times, potentially. Started from the bottom, now he's here. Not to go all, you know, Drake, University of Kentucky on you there. But, man, I just have a hard time believing someone that's biggest job is Washington was the first call for Alabama. Unless Greg Byrne did his work ahead of time, unless he and the boosters or, you know, maybe search from behind the scenes had some inclination that no, Nick Saban didn't even know until he walked in, but we had got to have a list ready just in case. I'm just not buying Kalen DeBoer's candidate one really good coach. Absolutely. Candidate one. Not so sure. Travis said landing himself said he never heard from Byrne. Sark said he was called, but no offer was made. Okay, that that says it right there. Sark was called. If Kalen DeBoer was the first call, Steve Sarkeesian doesn't get a call. That's not how it works. Steve Sarkeesian had to have been called before Kalen DeBoer was called. That's how these things go. Maybe there was no offer to Steve Sarkeesian, but here's the other thing. Kalen DeBoer was a heck of a lot cheaper than Steve Sarkeesian. 
Washington has money. Doesn't have Texas money. Not like that. Not if you're looking what Sark got. DeBoer's buyout. Not the same as Sark's. So I think Alabama made the best choice it could for the money it was willing to spend. How about that? Yeah, there's a lot of money behind Alabama football, but again, it's the pro team. We know there's money behind Nebraska athletics. It's not pro sports town money, not not Texas A&M money, as we've come to find out, you know, here in the last month or so. So no, maybe Steve Sarkeesian never made an offer or never received an offer, but I guarantee his agent got called, probably started talking through terms. Hypothetically, what would it take to get Steve Sarkeesian to Tuscaloosa? Even Dan Lanning, you know, Dan Lanning can be telling the truth and say he never heard from Greg Byrne. That doesn't mean his agent never heard from from Greg Byrne. You know, that's why these guys have agents to handle a lot of that stuff. And if, you know, Lanning's agent got a call and the offer was disrespectful, sure. You know, maybe Dan Lanning didn't actually hear that from Greg Byrne himself. I almost guarantee that Dan Lanning's agent heard from Alabama. Same with Steve Sarkeesian. Maybe even Lane Kiffin gets thrown into that conversation as well. So, again, happy for Kalen DeBoer. I think Alabama got a good coach. I think it's a stretch to to believe that he was the the first call that, that Alabama made. Um, and again, all of this ties in here to Kentucky losing its head coach, John Calipari, to Arkansas. Saw someone compare that to Jimbo Fisher going from Florida State to Texas A&M. That's on the table. I also think John Calipari is a much better basketball coach than Jimbo Fisher is a football coach. So I don't know if that's even fair to John Calipari necessarily. And this conversation again got brought up with Strick and I because, me and Strick, because Duke hired internally. Carolina hired internally. Kansas hasn't had to worry about it for a long time. If you want to throw UCLA into this blue blood conversation, you can go for it. They haven't kept it in the family for a while. And Mick Cronin had a good couple years. It still seems like a weird hire for UCLA, but that's the last, you know, blue blood that's really had to make a hire. Maybe Indiana, if you throw them out there, but Indiana's blue blood status is rapidly declining, if you ask me. Um, And I don't know how much of history is, you know, what you've done for me lately versus how much have you done, period. But Kentucky is a bigger job than any of those recent ones. I mean, Kentucky might be the biggest job in college basketball, to be quite honest. Um, Bigger market, closer to bigger markets than Kansas is. More established historically than both Duke and Carolina. So to watch a blue blood that I think, you know, had every every reason to, to part ways with John Calipari before it did, just based off of, again, I mentioned this during On the Block. John Calipari said he would be shocked if his tenure at Kentucky was was longer than 10 years. First 10 years, first decade of Coach Cal, elite, elite stuff. Title contention every year, uh, made all the final fours. Okay, he was in his 15th year, just completed his 15th year. The last five years, two missed NCAA tournaments, two second round exits, and a first round exit. Not very good, but again, he passed his 10-year mark, and he was beefing with the athletic director. And he didn't have a new facility built his entire time there in terms of his practice facility. I'm surprised John Calipari lasted as long as he did. I would have thought Mitch Barnhart would have drummed up the money and they would have had a mutual parting, even for a guy with a a lifetime contract. Arkansas bailed Kentucky out. And I think it's good for Arkansas. I think Arkansas comes out looking pretty good in this deal. They got a better coach than they've had since Nolan Richardson pretty easily. But now, is John Calipari the guy to help Arkansas take the next step? Because Eric Musselman got him to some elite eights in the Sweet 16. That's a big deal at a place that hasn't had much success again since Nolan Richardson. I'm Austin Norman. This is Old School on 93.7 The Ticket. Let's dive into the history of one versus one in the NCAA championship game. It's Purdue. It's UConn. We've had a handful of one seed versus one seed championship games. We'll run you down the history of those as we continue Old School. You're listening to Old School with DP and J. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. At Doan University, we build leaders, and that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours. 
and our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. This is former Husker and NFL linebacker Jay Foreman. For years, I've suffered from degenerative problems in both of my ankles, but thanks to a thorough and thought out plan provided by Advanced Medical Imaging, I was able to get my life back with the least amount of pain as possible. While working through multiple options, the team of physicians at Advanced Medical Imaging were there to answer any questions I had. If you're experiencing any pain at all and want to get your life back, go to amimaging.com or give them a call at 402-484-6677. Advanced Medical Imaging, located at 7601 Pine Nears Boulevard. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. The need in our community, if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. Hey there, fellas. It's your girl, Jordan, with Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Women may be complicated, but I make sure buying jewelry isn't. Your gal has a style, and you can figure this out. Is she more of a classic necklace kind of gal, or does she rock the boho chic vibe with layers of delicate bracelets? This is crucial intel. Not trusting your intel? Until next time, this is Jordan at Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Happy shopping, guys. It's officially one of the greatest weeks of the year on the sports calendar. Masters Week. Book your tee time today with friends, family, or coworkers at Double Eagle Golf inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Doors open at 10 a.m. from Thursday to Sunday, and they'll have food directly from Augusta National, like pimento cheese sandwiches, Georgia pecan caramel popcorn, and lots more. Plus, specialty drinks to get you in the mood for the greatest golf tournament in the world. Book a bay today at doubleeagle.golf. At Parkview Animal Hospital in Lincoln, it's not just their professional care that sets them apart, but their warm staff and state-of-the-art facilities. Whether it's for a routine checkup or a comprehensive medical procedure, at Parkview, your pet isn't just another number, but a valued member of their caring family. Visit them at pahlincoln.com today and in person just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road. Parkview Animal Hospital, your pet, our passion. For happier, healthier furry friends. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today, expecting mainly sunny skies, and it will be a little breezy, but mild with a high around 67. Tonight, mainly clear with a light breeze, a low around 36. And tomorrow, we'll see a lot of sunshine and calm winds, and high around 69. I'm meteorologist Kyle Butler for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Sick of being upsold at gyms? My guy, you're currently a base member? For $90 more, I can upgrade you to our Shred membership. For $130 more, you'll be a Swole member. And for just $300 more, you'll reach Sweat Platinum. At Planet Fitness, you'll get energy without the upsell. Never pushy, always free fitness training and equipment for every workout. It's fitness that fits your budget. Join Planet Fitness for just $1 down and $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends Friday, April 12th. See Home Club for details. Back to old school with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com.
segment two, hour one of Old School. I'm Austin Orman. You're also hearing me during On the Block with Strick and Austin. Two to four weekdays, and I sit on the board with DP and Jay for my favorite hours of the day. Hope they're yours as well. Appreciate everyone chiming in here on the text line, 402-464-5685. Don't forget, if you are not able to text, if you're sitting at a desk, potentially at work, uh, pull up our, our social media stream. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, if you're on mobile as well. And Allo Channel 961, if you're sitting at home, fire us up on the TV. All right. For the last time this year, this season, I should say, 93-7 the ticket, carrying the national championship game for the men. You can catch the radio broadcast right here on our airwaves. All our local programming will be stream only. But let's dive into this matchup here between Purdue and UConn. A matchup of number one seeds. It's the 10th time that we've gotten a matchup of a one seed and a one seed in the season's final game. CBS Sports put out a good article here. Some really interesting names, some interesting teams, interesting matchups in the previous uh, one versus one games. Before we get into it, guesses on the text line here, 402-464-5685. What year was the first one seed versus one seed matchup in terms of the modern, you know, full expanded tournament? 64 teams or more. Give you a few seconds to get those guesses in. It's happened 10 times. Uh, what was the first one? And if you name the the game's leading scorer without looking it up, might be a prize involved. Might just be a prize involved. All right, get your answers in here, but uh, just a couple more seconds before I tell you. The first one seed versus one seed game featured Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing. That's right, North Carolina in Georgetown in 1982 was the first time that two number one seeds uh, would square off for the national championship game. Jordan, of course, hits the go-ahead jump shot. James Worthy, who led all scores with 28 points, had the game-winning steal. A double-double for Patrick Ewing in that game, 23 points, 11 rebounds. But yeah, the first one versus one matchup in a national championship, North Carolina and Georgetown. Also interesting note here, um, Georgetown won't feature again on this list, but this matchup tonight between Purdue and UConn is the first time since 1984 that both teams will start a center who's seven foot tall or taller. That 1984 game, Georgetown, Houston, Patrick Ewing, Akeem Olajuwon. So there's a little NCAA basketball history for you for tonight. Okay. 11 years later, 1993, the next one versus one matchup in the national championship game. Carolina and Michigan. That's right. The Fab Five make it to the national title game. It was their last game that they would play together. Of course, that game most known for Chris Weber and his timeout that led to the technical foul in the free throws for North Carolina. 77 to 71, uh, Carolina beats Michigan in the second ever one seed versus one seed matchup. Okay, that was 93. We go six years later to UConn and Duke. The Huskies got on the board their first national championship. Uh, came under Jim Calhoun, snapped Duke's 32-game winning streak. Um, uh, Hamilton, 27 points. And this is that's a big deal because obviously UConn's a one seed at that time. They're really good. Plenty of NBA talent on that roster. Going up a Duke team that was absolutely loaded. Elton Brand was on that team. Trajan Langdon. Corey Maggette, uh, Williams Avery, all on that team as well. So Duke was a nine and a half point favorite in that game. UConn, UConn sprung the upset by just one possession, 77-74. But fast forward then 25 years from UConn's first title to tonight when they're going for number six. UConn, pretty big favorites over Purdue. Six and a half points. That's a big spread for a national championship game. And honestly, the way UConn's playing, it feels a little bit low right now. This UConn team has been a wagon, has been a machine. Uh, Alabama was tied with UConn halfway through the second half, basically starting the fourth quarter of the game. UConn and Alabama were tied. UConn goes on a big run, um, you know, just slowly, methodically, yet quickly squeezes the life out of Alabama, ends up winning that game by 14 points. So yeah, UConn favored by six and a half here over Purdue tonight. Moving on down the list of one seeds versus one seeds in the national championship game. You go from 1999 to 2005. Familiar name, familiar face here. North Carolina 
Another time that they feature here, they took down Illinois. That's right. We are not claiming Maryland's title in 2002 for the Big Ten. That's an ACC title. So Illinois had a shot to to get on the board after Mateen Cleaves and Michigan State did it in 2000, but North Carolina won that game by five points. The first title at Carolina for Roy Williams. Um, North Carolina led by 13 at halftime in that game. Illinois fought back to tie it up. Uh, Sean May led the way, 26 points. Ray Felton had 17 as well. Um, Illinois got a look to tie it, but missed it. Carolina hit two free throws. Boom. There's your final margin. Okay, from 2005, just a couple years later, Florida in 2007, their second national title in a row. They won it in 2006. Then they go back to back in 2007. All five starters returned from that 2006 Florida team. That's just unheard of. You know, even in that day and age of college basketball, to bring back all five starters was rare. To bring back all five starters from a tournament team, rare. From a Final Four team, even rare. And rarest yet, all five starters from a national championship team. Imagine that happening today. That you win a title with a bunch of sophomores and juniors. And not only does everyone have eligibility remaining, everyone wants to come back to college and not just come back to college, wants to keep the band together wants to play in the same team with each other for each other. It sure worked out for Florida. Billy Donovan, still the last coach to go back to back. Uh, we'll see if Dan Hurley can knock him off that throne, become the, the most recent coach that happened again the next year, Kansas, Memphis. How about that? Kansas, Mario Chalmers, Memphis, Derek Rose, uh, Sharon Collins on that Kansas team as well. Two seconds to go. Chalmers hits the three. Um, to, to tie the game, that uh, does end up going to overtime. Kansas pulls away. So back-to-back years, where it's a little chalky with one seed to making it out of both halves of the bracket. Then from 2008 to 2015, my personal favorite game on the list happened uh, just a couple days ago, actually nine years ago. Duke, Wisconsin. So Duke in the Final Four matched up with Michigan State, won that game by, what, 15, 20 points, I want to say. Not, not overly memorable. The memorable memorable game of that Final Four was Wisconsin knocking off Kentucky that was going for 40-0. A 38-0 Kentucky team entering the Final Four knocked off its perch by Wisconsin. So it's Duke and Wisconsin in the 2015 National Championship game. Dukes end up winning that game 68-63. Down nine, about 10 minutes to go in the second half. Grayson Allen, that's really where he made his name, uh, sparking that comeback, especially on offense. Uh, Jula Okafor went to the bench with four fouls, had a couple big buckets late. It's still one of my my personal favorite Duke teams to watch of all time. Uh, Kentucky fans, sorry to relive that for you. Um, but the interesting part about that, that Duke-Wisconsin game for me personally was uh, earlier that night, had a baseball game that had gotten over, you know, I don't know, about that midway point in the second half. I, I don't know why I had driven myself up to the game, but I know I was in my car driving along because I stopped at Burger King for chicken fries, had the Duke Wisconsin game on the radio, which again, you can listen to tonight here on 93.7, the ticket, um, that baseball game, I hit the one walk-off I ever hit in my career. And then I listened to Duke win the national championship on the gay home day, yeah, on the, on the way home. So April 6th, 2015, big day for young Austin Norman. Pretty great. A couple more. Uh, one seed versus one seed matchups to get to 2017. Then it was North Carolina and Gonzaga. Carolina had just uh, gotten knocked off by Villanova the year before the Chris Jenkins buzzer beater, Jay Wright, the calmest bang, uh, you know, the side of Mike Breen, really Carolina comes back. They're a one seed the next year. Tight game. Um, Carolina was down three at the half end up outscoring Gonzaga. Oh, excuse me, 39 to 30 in the second half. Um, to end up winning that national championship in 2017. Then the most recent one seed versus one seed matchup also featured Gonzaga. Okay, but it was Baylor. The Bears get on the board for the first time in school history. Not a close game. Baylor's size, their physical play, and even their shooting ability really outclass Gonzaga almost from start to finish here. And again, Gonzaga had a chance to go undefeated in 2021. Baylor said in perfectly Corso fashion, not so fast, my friend. 86 to 70. So it'll be a matchup of the one seeds tonight right here on these airwaves. UConn, the number one overall seed and Purdue, they've gone back and forth. The other interesting note on that 
is that these two teams are number one and number two in Ken Pomeroy's rankings. How about that? I, I had to go back and do some digging. I saw these games um, posted by someone on Twitter. I wanted to go double check to see if this was pre-tournament or post-tournament that they ended number one or number two. Um, because Ken Palm updates all the time, includes tournament results. So the other games that we talked about you now do feature uh, on this Ken Palm list. So 2005 was one versus two Carolina, Illinois. Carolina ends up winning it. Uh, one seed Kansas, two seed Memphis in 2008, or number two in Ken Palm, Memphis. Number one, Kansas wins it. Number one, Villanova versus number two, Carolina. Villanova in 2016. And then 2021, it was Baylor that was number one at Ken Palm, not Gonzaga. And the Bears end up winning that national championship. So a couple one seeds, the top two teams, according to really just the 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 man on top of the mountain, the man with the wisdom, Ken Pomeroy, the, the godfather of college basketball analytics, has those two teams, UConn and Purdue at one and two. Should be in for a good matchup tonight. Can Purdue get the Big Ten back on the board? Will UConn go back to back? It remains to be seen and heard on 93.7 The Ticket. We'll wrap things up for hour one of Old School on the other side. Watch Old School live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. The need in our community, if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havelock. This week's special through April 9th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $1.50 off all Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauces. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates, with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. You're spending $300 a month. Binge drinking is the most common form of excessive drinking, which costs the United States more than $191 billion each year. By drinking less, you will save $300 a month. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Buckle up and hang on. This is going to be a good one. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes oh, and family-friendly facilities. Trading pains. We got beauty. And tailgating tradition. Burnouts, beer, and barbecue. Oh, it'll for sure be a good time. And you are all invited. Yes, car weekend at Kansas Speedway, May 4th and 5th. Get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. Hey there, fellas. It's your girl, Jordan, with Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Women may be complicated, but I make sure buying jewelry isn't. 
Your gal has a style and you can figure this out. Is she more of a classic necklace kind of gal or does she rock the boho chic vibe with layers of delicate bracelets? This is crucial intel. Not trusting your intel? Stop in the store and we'll sort out the details. I promise to make this super easy. Until next time, this is Jordan at Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Happy shopping, guys. The dangers of secondhand smoke are well known. But what about secondhand aerosol, which is created when using e-cigarettes? Science already shows a secondhand aerosol can contain nicotine heavy metals, and cancer-causing agents. Eliminating exposure to secondhand aerosol is an important step to keeping everyone safe. Breathe easier knowing the facts. For help quitting, call the Nebraska Tobacco Quit Line. 1-800-QUIT-NOW. 1-800-784-8669. Paid for by Tobacco Free Nebraska. Aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. It's officially one of the greatest weeks of the year on the sports calendar. Masters Week. Book your tee time today with friends, family, or coworkers at Double Eagle Golf inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Doors open at 10 a.m. from Thursday to Sunday, and they'll have food directly from Augusta National, like pimento cheese sandwiches, Georgia pecan caramel popcorn, and lots more. Plus specialty drinks to get you in the mood for the greatest golf tournament in the world. Book a bay today at DoubleEagle.Golf. Back to old school with DP and J on 937 the ticket and the ticketfm.com. We're wrapping up hour one here of On the Block 93.7, the ticket, ticketfm.com. I'm Austin Norman. To the text line, we go to wrap up this hour. I want to shout out my dad here who came up with the words I was trying to get my brain to. Uh, but couldn't plausible deniability, right? Going back to the Alabama conversations that either, you know, happened or, or apparently didn't happen that I still think happened. Um, you know, not having the athletic director directly speak to the coach gives them both plausible deniability. That's the phrase, right? So yeah, Lanning can honestly say he never spoke to Greg Byrne and Greg Byrne can say he never spoke to Dan Lanning. Doesn't mean Greg Byrne didn't speak to an agent. Yep. That happens absolutely all the time. Um, so thanks, Dad, for listening and helping me find my words. Really appreciate that. Um, 89-85. Grayson Allen made his name by tripping people. Mm. No. Grayson Allen has become infamous for tripping people. But the first time America heard of Grayson Allen, he was actually winning the three-point shootout in high school. Oh, also, he won a high school dunk contest. So that's the first time. Okay, then he's kind of buried on Duke's bench till late in the year. And then he's the hero of the Final Four. Comes in, a little bit of a spark plug against Michigan State, has a put-back dunk off a corner three, uh, followed his own shot, slammed it back home. And then Grayson Allen won Duke that 2015 National Championship game. And that's at least a year, if not a couple years, before he tripped anyone. So, no, Grayson Allen made his name before he tripped people, but... Grayson Allen also made himself more infamous by tripping people. It's not like Grayson Allen had never been heard of, and then he just started tripping people, and oh, that's all he's known for. Like, like Grayson Allen was an All-American like caliber player. Grayson Allen was a superstar. I mean, he was the, the next you know face of Duke that people wanted to punch since Christian Leitner. I mean, really? Maybe throw Kyle Singler in that mix, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't recall nearly as much vitriol and, and hatred for Kyle Singler as there was for Grayson Allen, even before the trip. Like, Grayson Allen was a baller. Go look up that dude's college highlights. Oh, and maybe his NBA highlights while you're at it as well. He's been, you know, at the top of, if not leading the NBA in uh, three-point percentage basically all year long. It's him and Luke Kennard. Funny enough. Um, uh, 86 42 throws JJ Reddick out there. Yeah, that's a good one. It was Leitner, then it was Reddick. Can't believe I skipped completely over that one. Yeah, it was Christian Leitner to JJ Reddick, then a few years down the line. And then from Reddick, I really think it's Grayson Allen that's next, who, yes, deserves his fair share of the hate for, for tripping, has owned up to it, and you know, hasn't done it in the NBA. But also, just to say Grayson Allen made his name by tripping people just completely neglects history and, and everything that he did on the court before that. Um, insightful dude. Hurley has the most punchable face in college basketball. Ooh. Does he? I mean, it's up there. 
it's up there. I, I'm not willing to give him number one undisputed. I'm not because there are some others. Um, OG Les Lancaster, yes, Grayson Allen is still in the NBA, shooting like 44% from three this year for Phoenix, which you don't hear about uh, because when you hear about Phoenix, you hear about KD and Booker and Beal and how they're just kind of okay for all that star power. But Grayson Allen's definitely, you know, still in the NBA. Um, Dan Hurley among coaches, definitely, definitely up there. Um, Brad Underwood, honestly, I think falls in that category, potentially. Um, and Gator says, Coleman Hawkins of Illinois is the most punchable face to me. Coleman Hawkins reminds me a little bit of like Ian Poulter, the actor, I think is his name. Um, oh, Bobby Hurley too. Insightful doodads. Eh, I feel like Dan, Dan Hurley's face is more punchable, but Bobby Hurley antagonized more than, than Dan Hazard. Does. I mean, Dan Hurley at the podium has said some really good stuff. He's been on point with his comments. Um, very online, very self-aware dude. Dan Hurley is. We know Bobby Hurley, the instigator from his days at Duke. Um, his coaching reputation hasn't lived up to his playing reputation. And it's the exact opposite for for Dan Hurley, who wasn't nearly the player his brother was, but has proven to be a, a more successful coach here at the college level. Uh, 23-12, I don't know if this is legit, if you're just throwing the obligatory Iowa jab in here, Fran McCaffrey. See. Fran's face gets red enough on its own. You know, Fran is occasionally self-aggrandizing, but not really, I don't see a lot of smugness in Fran McCaffrey. And when I think of a, a face of someone that we all love to hate, I think of a smirk. I think of a sly grin. I think of someone who acts so high and mighty, so far above you. They feel like they're untouchable. And no matter how many times they get brought low, they still put themselves up there. I don't necessarily see that with McCaffrey, but he is also the Iowa head coach. And if you're a Husker fan, I get that. Who are the college basketball villains in this day and age? How about that? Let's have that conversation in hour two of old school. Um, 2396, John Shire has a punchable face. Um, agree to disagree, but okay. Uh, explain why John Shire has a punchable face and I'll see if I can give you arguments more credence. So waiting on Jay Foreman, we'll see if he makes it in. If not, I'll carry you through old school here on 93.7 The Ticket. You're listening to Old School with DP and J. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates, with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska's always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student-athletes, so go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The Electrical Workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Are you ready to take your seating season to the next level? Now is your chance to Landmark Implements Early Order Program. Don't miss out on the best deals of the season on new John Deere air seeders and drills, including the N500C Central Commodity System. 
Experience the ease of operation with the new N500C's intuitive design, simplifying your seating process and saving you valuable time in the field. Lock in the largest cash discount, snag the best financing rate, and ensure availability on a new drill. Contact your local Landmark location for full details and experience the Landmark difference. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today, expecting mainly sunny skies, and it will be a little breezy, but mild with a high around 67. Tonight, mainly clear with a light breeze, and a low around 36. And tomorrow, we'll see a lot of sunshine and calm winds, and after the high around 69. I'm meteorologist Kyle Clutter for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You don't think about your roof very often, but you should never take it for granted. Roofing Service Company takes every measure to provide you with the highest quality roofing solution. Whether it's a new roof installation, roof repair, or a re-roofing project, their overall goal is to provide you with a pleasant experience and a long-lasting roof. If you have a need for siding or gutters, they're your place too. Visit RoofingServiceCompany.com for more info today. Grab a free burger and beer at L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the L.A. Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th. L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Sick of being upsold at gyms? My guy, you're currently a base member? For $90 more, I can upgrade you to our Shred membership. For $130 more, you'll be a swole member. And for just $300 more, you'll reach Sweat Platinum. At Planet Fitness, you'll get energy without the upsell. Never pushy, always free fitness training and equipment for every workout. It's fitness that fits your budget. Join Planet Fitness for just $1 down and $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends Friday, April 12th. See Home Club for details. On the block with Strick and Austin. I think about all the infrastructure that got built up behind the scenes by, by Coach Osborne that Coach Solich took over. And then some of that infrastructure was eroded. Matt Rule still has to prove this, but I think Matt Rule's style is that, yeah, he'd like the infrastructure in place, but I think Matt Rule has the personality to do everything in his power to bend it to the way he wants it. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. This is Old School. Sponsored by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. Broadcasting veteran Derek Pearson. When you find something that moves them, that makes them smile, celebrate it. That's your task. That's your superpower. Nebraska Football Hall of Famer, Jay Foreman. Rifles a pass. It was tipped. It's picked off by Foreman. He's at the 15. 10, 5. He'll score! On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome into Hour 2 of Old School, brought to you by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. As Jay Foreman would say, every type of meat and every type of cut. I'm Austin Norman, holding it down here in the studio DP out today. We're about to hear from Jay Foreman on Inside the Huddle uh, from just yesterday. In case you missed it, uh, Jay does have Inside the Huddle as a, a big part of our Ticket Weekends content. Uh, Jay, as he's wont to do on Inside the Huddle, Talked a lot of football, obviously talked a lot of Huskers, brings it all back home. Talking about the quarterback position. We talked about it a little bit at the end of that that last week when we had uh, Riola and Kalen and Harburg all take the podium alongside Marcus Satterfield and Glenn Thomas. But uh, here's our own Jay Foreman uh, on Inside the Huddle talking all things Husker quarterbacks. Welcome into Inside the Huddle with Jay Foreman brought to you by Advanced Medical Imaging, 7601 Pioneers Boulevard. We are in the spring uh, spring football edition of football we're going to break down the quarterbacks and running backs and then also we're going to try to get it get into the linebacker position you know to be honest with you um 
you know, I think those are the three most important positions. I, no, besides the offense and defensive line, which I think is the, probably the most, but I think besides that, if you had a, on a scale of one being the offense and defensive line, that's way above everything else. I think the next for our team is quarterback position, uh, both in production, depth, and leadership, and then also with the linebacker position, both in production, depth, and leadership. So let's start out with the quarterback position. Obviously, um, with Daniel Kalen coming in, it was a great get for Nebraska. Um, you know, first he was a at, at first a Missouri commit, got flipped back to Nebraska uh, very quickly. So it lets you know that the, I guess I, I will say the the communication was great by the coaching staff. That the you know look he committed to Missouri, they must have continued to have you know good feelings or, or you know some sort of connection with him. Was able to come back to Nebraska and commit. And uh, it, it provided some, you know, stability and excitement in the uh, recruiting departments. And then uh, to take it a little bit a step further, you had Heinrich Harburg uh, that got some, you know, quality, you know, experience last year after filling in for Jeff Sims. And then obviously Chubba Purdy, you know, uh, filled in at the end of the season, but decided to hit the transfer portal. I think he's down in Nevada right now. So you wish him all the best. And then out of nowhere, Dylan Raiola decides to break the Internet, break the news cycle was even on the Today Show when he committed, obviously, you know, let alone every sports channel and uh, every sports media person talking about it for probably two weeks after he committed and come to Nebraska. Now, initially, you're, you're saying, well, how are the, these three young quarterbacks, and all of them are equivalent of freshmen, and the reason why I say that, even though uh, Heinrich Harburg played, fundamentally, I think that he was way behind the equivalent of a high school quarterback because he wasn't coached for a whole year by the prior staff's offensive coordinator slash quarterback coach. Was it purposeful? Who knows? Can't cry over spilled milk, but that's the way it was. Uh, he got he was given a chance early in the spring of, of Matt Rule's first tenure here, or first year, and showed some improvement to where they were able to put him in the game and obviously use his athletic ability in smaller stints and then obviously led to the starting role once Jeff Sims got hurt. And so you have three young quarterbacks, and how do you um, both – Set up a system where they're competing, but then number two is when, when, and who do you decide to go with, and then what does that do for the rest of your room, especially when you have two very, very high uh, regarded freshmen coming in. Daniel Kalen, I think, is a four star recruit. I, I know he went to the Elite Eleven. Uh, Dylan Raiola is obviously a five star recruit. I think he might have been on some people's rankings the number one recruit overall in the whole class, and and if not one of the top if not the top quarterback uh, recruit in, in the class. And obviously, you know, bias and stuff like that. I feel like we got the two best quarterback commits uh, in the nation. And so then you, you bring in Heinrich Harburg or have Heinrich Harburg, uh, who brings a different skill set than those two. I think both of those guys, the two freshmen I mean, I'm talking about, are more of a pocket passer, but they're both, uh, you know, really, really good athletes. But I think obviously they can throw the ball at a, at a high rate. And they've shown that obviously throughout different camps, seven on seven, high school camps, college camps, obviously they're in their high school uh, careers, that they're, you know, more pocket passers, but both of them are, are able to run the ball. Where Heinrich Harburg, I think when you look at athletic ability with some of his runs in the quarterback run game, option game, obviously provides that kind of old school Nebraska ground and pound, Scott Frost, Tommy Frazier, Eric Crouch type of breakaway speed as far as, you know, the ability to uh, affect the game on the ground through the run game, but then shows that showed the ability to throw some deep balls as well. Uh, accuracy was some issue was a little bit of an issue, but I think that is something that I'll get into right now. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all three quarterbacks, give you my uh, defensive perspective, um, you know what they do well, what they can get better at, and what to expect. Right, and it's a little bit hard to look at the two freshmen, but we'll just go off of off the little tape that I've seen that it isn't the highlights that you see on every Instagram, TikTok or every recruiting service out there. So let's start with Heinrich Harburg first and foremost. Obviously, uh, big, strong, athletic kid, 6'4", about 225, explosive. Uh, obviously, has straightaway speed, uh, showing the ability to affect the game on the ground. Tough kid, too. You know, he took, take, took some hits, was able to answer the bell, had some uh, injuries that normally people might miss some games, but you let you know he has some mental toughness and, and wherewithal to uh, play through some uh, injuries that normally might sideline a first-time starter or somebody that may be not as tough. And that's not questioning anybody's toughness, but I'm going to make sure I accentuate his toughness. Uh, has a strong arm. 
right? And here's the difference between having a strong arm and being a strong armed passer with accuracy. Um, a strong arm, if you want to look at the NFL, probably one of the strongest arms ever to come through the NFL is or was Jamarcus Russell. Could throw potentially 75 yards off of his knees, has a, had a hose for an arm. In, in newer um, or more recent times, Cardell Jones from Ohio State, that was one of the three quarterbacks that played during their national championship uh, run that year, decided to come back, didn't probably play as well the year he came back to Ohio State. It was accuracy, accuracy issues, but he didn't lack arm strength. Uh, Heinrich Harburg probably fits right in there. I think the difference with Heinrich Harburg is just not doing something or being coached in something when you needed to really have a quarterback coach when you first stepped on campus and not getting coached for a year or not being actively coached, um, you know, set him back some. And but you know what I think he made some strides to where the point where where the coaching staff felt like it was, they were good enough to get in there. So where how do you um, fix his you know accuracy issues or can be more consistent? I think it comes to footwork, and then obviously then the, your footwork leads to your arm angle, and then that also would even makes that even I guess work more efficiently is learn the game, know the game at a higher rate um, of efficiency. What I mean is you're able to. You're able to, I guess, take calculated guesses. You're able to um, make reads a lot faster. So then when your brain is moving at a faster pace but not in a hurry, that just goes right down to your footwork and then your arm angle and then your accuracy will goes up, go up. You'll start to get better at little things to where can I throw this ball to Thomas Fedoni to where he can catch it wherever his catch radius is in which, you know, being 6'5 and have long arms and being – you know, having a really, you know, wide catch radius, you're able to get it to him where he's able to get up field, break some tackles, and then obviously get some run after the catch. Now, how does that benefit Heinrich Harburg? Well, if he throws an eight-yard um, quick out to, to uh, Thomas Fedoni in this case or, or, or shallow crossing route, he catches it, is able to break the tackle, get some run after the yards after the catch. Thomas Fedoni gets, you know, say a 40-yard catch, right? Guess who gets the beneficiary of the yards? That's Heinrich Harburg. So it's it's a thinking or it's operating individually, thinking collectively. So those are the things that you know, he needs to work on. And I think it all starts with his preparation, preparation and study habits. And obviously that leads to leadership. That's every day, all day, every practice, every meeting, off days. There's no day off. It's, this is a 365, 24-7 uh, project for him. So he's He's at a place though where he can show as much of an improvement in a, as a jump as the two new toys that come in. And so here's when we talk about these two freshmen, and we'll talk, you know, we'll ball them both in in some cases, and then we'll separate them in in some cases as well, at least in my opinion. How you separate the two? Obviously, when you're looking at Dylan Ryola, 6'3, 220, 25 pounds, very, I mean, looks the part. Um, when he walks and he moves, you know he's a next level guy. He has big time potential. You see some of the things where, like, okay, we see why he was number one, right? You see it more times than not. Uh, what you, you, when you always hear about somebody like that, you want to make sure what you see at practice or what you see, you know, or hear from the coaches is he all that's advertised? I think the answer to that is yes. Now it comes down to the nuances of the game. The thing about Dylan is he has a strong arm and he's very accurate. He knows the game, so he's able to anticipate. He's every he's able to take calculated guesses and he's able to throw guys open because of the reps that he's had, the training that he's had, and he has a benefit that a lot of people that are coming into college or going into pros or going into high school in any type of competition, he's been in an NFL locker room before. He has, you know, Matthew Stafford and other host of NFL quarterbacks and and, and stuff like that on his cell phone that he can reach out to and then ask them questions. Plus he's been in this arena of high pressure work and which leads to results and having the focus and the plan to be the best that you can be. That's how you, you know, become the number one rated player, the number one rated quarterback. It might be the number two quarterback, the number two or three player. When you're talking about a top five, top 10 type of player in the, in the recruiting, you know, rankings, you're pulling small hairs there and it's all about, you know, it's subjective and it could be where you're at, what high school you, you, you know, you went to and whoever's mad at whoever or mad at your high school coach when they wrote an, wrote, wrote an article or saw you play in one of your best games or maybe one of your average games. But nevertheless, you know, Dylan Raiola 
has the intangibles as well. Um, he knows what leadership looks like. His dad is his dad, who I got to play with and play against in practice, but got to play with to play against a few times in the NFL, is probably one of the best um, young leaders that has came in. Um, he let his pads and his work ethic uh, do the talking. Um, he didn't start right away as a freshman, but then he was laser-like focused to not only start as a sophomore, but then be one of the best offensive linemen in Nebraska history. That's why his name is up in the stadium. That's why he played 13, 14 years in the league. And that's why right now we're talking about his oldest son, uh, Dylan Raiola, is potentially being a game changer for the program. But on the flip side, Daniel Kalen from Bellevue West is no punk. He's no he's no joke. He's 6'2". I'm, I'm assuming about 210, 215. I knew about Daniel uh, his freshman year when he went down to Florida State. They gave him or they gave him an offer. He hadn't even started yet. I think he might have been playing JV. Um, I talked to one of my friends down there by the name of Sam Coward, who was a mentor of mine, who was at the camp, saw him throw. He's like, he, one of his things, he said, he's like, man, I didn't know they played football like that in Nebraska and had a guy that could throw. And I said, yeah, he doesn't even play uh, varsity yet. And that's where I first heard about him. I know Nebraska was looking at him. Um, wasn't really probably to his liking as far as the previous staff wanting him and recruiting him hard. Obviously, then Missouri, who ended up being a top 10 this year, didn't hesitate to offer him and uh, offer him a committable offer, which, you know, was an easy choice considering uh, he went to the, the Elite 11 or made the Elite 11, and he finished, I think he finished in the top five or six. So I'll let you know he can actually really do some of the things that you read about it periodically on different websites that he can actually play the position of quarterback. And then obviously he had two great receivers that are going to be the Huskers, uh, Hall and um, oh, uh, McMorris, who will be here in the summer. Hall is here now. Uh, but the, everything I've heard about Daniel Kalen, I think he's exceeded expectations, right? I think he did a really good job of showing up in shape. That means he's physically bigger, fit, fitter, really embraced being on campus, embraced the competition, has leadership skills. I think he's came in and he's he's going out there and competing and improving himself. And he's trying to show everybody there's not much difference between me or himself, excuse me, and Dylan Raiola. So he's doing a really good job. He has a live arm. He's a really good athlete. Um, I think the the passing scheme that he played in high school, along with the work that he did, uh, for years with the with, at the Warren Academy in the summer has really allowed him to step on campus and the moment not be too big. And plus, he has the respect of his, of his peers because of his work ethic and the, being a, in a competitive nature, which is fit right in with, with Matt Rule and uh, Marcus Satterfield to want uh, from, you know, the quarterback position, but any player, you know, on their offensive side in this case or on the football team in general with Matt Rule. So I think it's going to be a long, uh, hard-fought competition. Ideally, you'd like somebody to be the starter right now, and you're trying to work on the little fine new things to make them a all American quarterback. But we don't have that uh, luxury right now. But I think all three, you know, if they, you know, take the right steps, can be the starting quarterback at the beginning of the season. But you got to earn it, and it's going to be a competition because the one thing that I've seen is over college football is young quarterbacks coming in ready to contribute. That's not is that's not normal considering the way it was. But I think the offseason training, the exposure that these guys are getting to being on college campus, to throwing all the time, skills trainers, quarterback trainers, you see these guys come in ready to play. If you have a good support system, both both from the offensive line, the running back room, I think guys come in and make an not an instant impact, impact in the sense of they're able to show up play let their pads do the talking arm do the talking head do the talking and leadership and the brain leading the team and they don't look out of place and that's what's really good about some of these programs that are sending quarterbacks to not only the power five could be fcs level and anything lower than that they're all able to play and do uh, a magnificent job when they're out there uh, competing to try to be a starting quarterback so i think as far as this goes you know i think they're going to try to even out the reps and see who can separate themselves and i think it's going to come down to who can command the offense, um, who has came in and earned the respect of their peers, not only on the offensive side, defensive side, but also the coaching staff, but then also who can execute in different types of environment that the coaching staff and players, or not the coaches, but the coaching staff and the coaches and everything have put them in a uh, position to, you know, game-like uh, situations, who is able to step up and be the most consistent. And I think when you look at it last year, if you had consistency at the quarterback position, which also is not solely on them, 
uh, Nebraska is coming out would be coming off a bowl game and hopefully a bowl game victory. But we're trying to make a bowl game and get back on the track. And so that's what the quarterback position is going to play a big part, uh, you know, in doing so. So I don't know who I think is the favorite right now. I think that it's, it, it's, you know, wide open and I think they're doing a probably a good job. You know, I haven't been to practices or anything, but they're probably doing a good job of splitting up the reps. But to the flip side, my position, the quarterback of the defense, Normally, everybody says, uh, you know, DBs and, you know, the rover position and the three, three, five. Well, I'm going to say the linebacker, position, the stack linebacker in, in, in particular is going to be ultra important to the success of this team. When you look at the defensive line and you saw the improvement, some of the young guys that came in, Cam Linhart, Prince, then you, know, you got Nash, um, you got Van Poppel, Ty Robinson, Jamar Butler, Sherman. You was like, OK, we got some depth. Right, yeah. So, they, so then that's the that's the known, and then you look, and then you like the defensive backfield. You got Buford, um, you you got Tommy Hill, you like Hartsog, you like you like it. Singleton, you like okay. Then we got, um, you know, um, Isaac Gifford. You know, so you 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 think like okay, our back end is good. Well, guess what? We lost. We lost Nick Heinrich, who retired from football. Unfortunately, you know, battled injuries and just felt like it was time. Body kind of broke down a little bit, but he was a productive player when when he played. More importantly, he was a guy that had the ears and the hearts of that defense. He was the, the heart and soul of your defense, right? And he played a lot of plays and a lot of snaps for the University of Nebraska. And at times, it was one of the, you know, he's had a 100 tackle season and probably was on closely on that mark if he would have really picked it up to get there last year. And then his co partner, right? Whereas Nick was the cerebral type of guy. And then you had Luke Reimer, who was, Really, really fast, big playmaking ability, three down linebacker can blitz, cover, play to run pretty well. He's gone, uh, trying out for the NFL now. So you got your two starting linebackers. Not only that, we're starting last year, but we're starting the two previous years that are gone from your program. And now you have to replace that. Now we we're fortunate enough to get Stefan Thompson um, from the University of Syracuse. But by the way, that uh, Tony White used to be the defensive coordinator. Uh, you expect to expect him to come in and make an impact and, and put his name and throw his a big hat into the ring of being the starter. So you feel comfortable with that. You or you like to feel comfortable with that, but he has to come in and produce, right? I always say this. What you did at Syracuse is good, but it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to be successful at the University of Nebraska. So what it means is you have to come in, improve yourself, and then also double down what you did at Syracuse to make you a attractive get from the transfer portal to come here. It seems like a seamless connection, seamless marriage uh, between Tony White, one of his former players. Why did I say that? He knows what he's made of. He's played in his three, three, five. He can make the transition from two starters that I just mentioned and have a lot of respect for that. They had that they had at university of Nebraska for the last four years with a guy that knows Tony White's system. Tony White knows him. He can really lead. He can call plays. He can be extension of the defensive coordinator. That's the way it looks like, and that's what they're hoping, and that's what Stefan Thompson's hoping, and that's what I'm hoping, and that's probably what the coaches are hoping. Now, the other spot, it's up in the air. Who's going to be it? Is it Javen Wright? Is it Makai Gaber? Does he take the, the reins by it where he played? He was a jack of all trades. He played the jack position. He played a little stack position. He was a blitzer. He was kind of a rover. Who steps up at that other linebacker position? Is it Michael Booker Jr. or Michael Booker II, who has shown a lot of flashes? Now you got to get him to believe in those flashes and believe that he's a starter. Or is it one of the freshmen? Is it Dylan Rogers? That was a, obviously a big kid out of, out of Texas. Big, strong, physical kid. Um, looks good. Just needs a little bit of fine-tuning. So the pressure's on the linebacker room. And then also, let's not forget the surprise of last year, I think, uh, from spring ball, let alone from winter conditioning, excuse me, then the spring ball, then obviously to the season was Bullock, um, came in, reshaped his body into a linebacker, kind of went from like a strong safety rover type to a special teams guy to a linebacker, looked like a linebacker, kept it up all year, can really, really run. At times showed that he was an impact. Can he, coming back for his super senior year, be that guy, kind of like a combination between Luke Reimer and Nick Heinrich, along with Stefan Thompson, with Makai Gaber. Then, we talk about, listen, we're strong up the middle. It feels strong up the middle with Ty and Nash and Van Poppel and all those guys, right? Then you think of, okay, we got three linebackers that I just mentioned and then the four or five, let alone known guys in the back, but they have a ton of depth from 
Hill that they got in the transfer portal to some of the freshmen that you're waiting for, Boodle's bro, or, uh, Dwight Boodle's uh, brother, all these guys that have shown small flashes. The depth is there. The potential is there. Now you need the middle of the defense to really step up. So as crucial as it is for the um, quarterback position, it's even more crucial for the middle linebacker and the stack linebacker position to step up, improve their, improve their self, and really separate themselves. And I'll say this before we go to break. I would like to see the rotation or the guys that you, you think you could account or count on separate themselves by the spring game. Why is that more important than the quarterback position? They're both are important. Now, like one guy just won it next week, but that's gonna I think it's gonna take a little bit longer. Because you have enough guys there that have played, right? At college football level. Bullock, Thompson, Gaber, young guys as well that you would like to see those three plus maybe one or two guys separate themselves initially and early to bring the continuity to the defense so the defense as a whole can carry the water up the side of the hill that can get rocky sometimes without spilling it like they're supposed to, like they're actually expected to this year. The expectations and inter- internally and externally are going to be even higher this year for the defense. And so that's why you'd like the middle of the defense or the middle or the second level of defense, excuse me, to separate themselves. That'll allow Tony White to do some more things on defense when he was initially put in the base defense and was able to do things on a week to week basis. The learning curve, the standard, the, the ability to get better, to take hard coaching, to apply it to the field, go back, do it again, reshape it, reform it and start to move to you putting your best performance out there against UTEP starts with the middle linebacker position. As long as everybody else holds their head above water and does what they're supposed to supposed to do. And more importantly, gets better as they're doing it through spring ball, through summer workouts, through fall camp, and then obviously day in and day out during the season. So that is my first uh, long segment about the spring ball edition. We're going to take a quick break, come back, and then we are going to talk a little bit more about the wide receiver position, tight end position, and then also the offensive line position. Jay Foreman, Inside the Huddle, brought to you by Advanced Medical Imaging, 7601 Pioneers Boulevard. They will handle all your medical needs, all your MRI needs, and more importantly, give you a game plan just as great and and more as influential as Tony White and Marcus Satterfield to put your best uh, foot forward moving forward. Jay Foreman, Inside the Huddle, Advanced Medical Advanced medical imaging we're gonna take a quick quick break and we'll be right back watch old school live on facebook youtube or twitch old school with dp and j on 93 7 the ticket and the ticket fm.com are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene the electrical workers of local union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits call mike at 402-875-1034 to apply start your electrical career today load up on meat and more this spring at the mercado by certified piedmontese at 84th and happy this week's special through april 9th is buy one get one free on eight ounce flat iron steaks limit four per visit also, a dollar fifty off all Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauces, and don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln, or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Grab a free burger and beer at LA Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the L.A. Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th. L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. Hey, Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska's always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student-athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. 
Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fear's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter, or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fuhrer's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Finally, a good reason to have a smart house. Just say, Alexa, play 93.7 The Ticket and we'll magically start playing. How's it work? Nobody knows. Don't ask questions. Okay, it's time to sell the house. How do we even begin to choose from the hundreds of realtors in town? Easy. We make a pros list. You mean a pros and cons list? No, just a pros list. We need someone with pro photography to showcase the house in the best possible way. Pro marketing to make sure we get maximum exposure. Pro negotiations so we know we get the best price. This is one of those times where you already know the right answer, isn't it? You know it is. Ben Bleicher and Professional Realty Group. Contact Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Services Ambassador online at prg-ne.com. Perch Merch is your one-stop shop for all your printing and promotional needs in Lincoln, Nebraska. They specialize in screen printing, embroidery, vehicle wraps, window wraps, print collateral, promotional products, and signage. At Perch Merch, they are committed to delivering high-quality products and exceptional customer service. Their experienced team of designers and printing professionals will work with you every step of the way to ensure that your vision is realized. Call for a quote today at 402-217-5212 or go to perch-merch.com. What a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk coffee and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill million times better. Hey, Nebraska. Register today for the 40th annual Cornhusker State Games, taking place July 11th through the 21st in Lincoln, Omaha, and other Nebraska communities. The Cornhusker State Games features 70 sports for athletes of all ages and abilities. Price increases are approaching, so register early and save. For details, go to CornhuskerStateGames.com. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel with Gatorade. Brought to you by Pepsi-Cola of Lincoln, a proud partner of the Cornhusker State Games. Back to old school with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back here during Old School, brought to you by the Mercado Certified Piedmontese. The voice you just heard last segment was that of the Husker Hall of Famer, Jay Foreman. Number 56, number 44, Jay's two favorite numbers. I'll be holding down the fort here for the next 25, 26 minutes or so. Top of the hour, Harrison Orange will be in. And then our coverage of the national championship game between UConn and Purdue hits your airwaves at 6.30. Any local shows we have tonight will still be streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Thanks to Sarder Heyman Jewelers for that. Sarder Heyman Jewelers also sponsors our text line, 402-464-5685. And before the top of the hour, I asked, who's the, the most hateable player in college basketball right now? Some people, some of you took that to mean who has the most punchable face. Um, 2396, you never followed up. Why is John Shire's face punchable? I, I need to know your rationale for that if you're still listening. A um, couple more responses to get to here. Downtown Scott says Barnheiser, assuming that you mean Brooks Barnheiser of Northwestern, who is a better player than I, I want to give him credit for, has that kind of Northwestern look to him. Like if you picture just a, a Northwestern player, Brooks Barnheiser comes to mind. But don't you have to be like really good to be hateable or have a punchable face? Like Brooks Barnheiser's fine. He's pretty good. 
But man, I don't know if he's good enough to get the punchable moniker. That's just me. 4850, Jawan Howard. Okay. Jawan is a fascinating case because I don't want to believe that the Jawan Howard we've seen in public is the Jawan Howard that he wants to be, if that makes sense. The Athletic did a really good profile on Jawan Howard not too long ago. And Juwan, you know, admitted that he kind of lost control of himself. He didn't know what it was he was doing. Like he, he said he felt, you know, like he was on the defensive against Joe Krabenhoft, Um, struck him first. He was remorseful for it. Extremely, extremely remorseful. Said, yeah, there's no way I should have done that. He didn't strike me. He didn't come after me. Um, it was just words I initiated. Juwan took full responsibility for that incident. You look at the the strength coach. That Sanderson, I believe his name is, that ended up leaving Michigan. That dispute, I think, got blown up, you know, to more than it needed to be. Um, so I, I think Juwan gets a little bit worse of a rap because it seems like, you know, before Michigan, pretty universally respected guy. I mean, longtime NBA stalwart, riding the bench for the Heat as, as a mentor for a lot of years. Juwan Howard's going to find his way back into coaching. But the other part of this that I think amplifies the issues Juwan was having, especially this year, is he himself admitted that he got stuck in an alpha male sort of mentality where his doctors told him to rest for six to 12 weeks after his heart surgery. Like he had a blood clot that was saving his life, that was saving an aortic aneurysm from rupturing. Uh, so he had open heart surgery before the year. Phil Martelli took over in the interim role. Juwan Howard came back within a month. It might've even been just a couple weeks. Um, but Juwan Howard made such a point to prove himself, almost put too big of a chip on his shoulder in some regards and acted up to that chip instead of you know, maybe reading the room a little bit better and, and trying to understand that, hey man, you just had heart surgery. It's okay. Or hey man, not everything is an attack or an affront on you. So I think the best is still to come for Juwan Howard as a coach, but some of his antics were definitely, you know, I can see where you're getting that from. Um, Dave says, LeBron, well, good thing we're talking about college basketball here, Dave. Sorry if that wasn't clear. Uh, LeBron never played college basketball, so sorry about that. Insightful Dude says, Bronny is pretty easy to hate. Really? Bronny? LeBron James Jr.? Nah. I, I can't go there. He is a good player. He's not his dad. Right? We, we had that conversation with Alabama football. Kalen DeBoer is a good coach. He's not Nick Saban. Bronny James is going to be a good player. He's not his dad. I, I think Bronny has handled the spotlight really well. He's not constantly in the news for being obnoxious or being a brat. He's a quieter kid. He's humble. He's kept his head down and he worked. A lot has been made about Bronny and his journey and his time, but I don't think that's self-promotion from him. I don't think that's self-promotion from USC. I think that's just media saying, hey, LeBron James's son is playing college basketball. We got to cover this kid. So I disagree on Bronny. Now, not to say he can't, you know, think a little higher of himself with wherever he ends up in the transfer portal. Um, but, but as of now, I'm not mad at Bronny. I, I don't think, all the coverage is from him. You know, I don't think he's done anything particularly noteworthy to draw attention to himself other than be LeBron James's son. Pretty good player. I can see the outline for more, but I disagree on hating Bronny. I, I think let's ease up on the young man. And 7449 says Caitlin Clark is pretty hateable. Uh, yeah, been plenty of discourse there on that one. Let's bring it back home here to Nebraska men's basketball really quickly. Uh, the Huskers did pick up a transfer portal addition today. That's right, Husker fans. There's one in the fold. Joining Fred Hoiberg and his squad, the player is Andrew Morgan. He's a post from North Dakota State, 6'10", 235. Last time Nebraska got a transfer from North Dakota State just a couple years ago, being Sam Greasel. The Lincoln East product comes back home to play his final year of college eligibility out in Husker Red. Andrew Morgan is from Minnesota. Obviously made his way to North Dakota State to start his career. When he entered the portal, I was hearing conflicting reports that Nebraska was tops on his list and that Minnesota was tops on his list. I always considered him a slight Minnesota lean, but I think this is a pretty darn good pickup for Nebraska. So last year, 23-24 season, 
He made the All Summit League team. He averaged 12.9 points, five rebounds, and an assist per game. Shot 56% from the floor, 36% from three, and 70% at the free throw line. I, I only watched a few minutes of his highlights. Wasn't used the same way at North Dakota State as he will be at Nebraska. But in what he was asked to do, lower volume role for the Bison, he was pretty good. The best explanation I have for him after, again, just those few minutes of of watching film, the best comparison, I should say, I'm going to say he's that nice middle ground between Rink Mast and Josiah Alec. I think Rink Mast is a better, more consistent shooter than Andrew Morgan is. Definitely higher volume. Morgan only took about one three per game, but connected again to that 36.4% mark. So capable shooter, capable pick and pop big. We saw Nebraska do that some with Rink Mast. Um, he rolled to the basket a lot more than I think we saw Rink Mast do consistently. Rink Mast would either get the ball on the block or uh, the high post, really. High pick and roll and pop out. We didn't really see much of a a roll threat from Nebraska, but North Dakota State did use Andrew Morgan on the roll. Pretty good finisher, not elite finisher at the rim by any means, but he goes up with bad intentions. And that's important. That's a different attitude than I think we've seen from Nebraska bigs and really just Nebraska players in general is driving to the rim, trying to finish. And some of you out there might be raising your eyebrows. What do you mean? Doesn't everyone want to you know, finish the layup or, or dunk when they go to the rim? They'll tell you that, but their actions can paint a different story. Nebraska recently has had so many guys that are smooth. They can get up, they can dunk, that, you know, especially if they have an open lane, can do it. Andrew Morgan took off through traffic with bad intentions, trying to dunk on people, but he has that kind of Jawan Gary quality to him where he can go so violently and aggressively at the rim and yet still have the body control and the touch to finish pretty softly. So I think Andrew Morgan um, can bring just a little bit of an edge to Nebraska, right? What's the difference between a dunk and a layup? They're both two points. Well, nifty finishes are cool, but Nebraska's kind of lacked that authoritative, hey, I just dunked on you. Hey, I just grabbed a rebound between two of you and I elevated over you and dunked on you for two points. I really think Nebraska has been missing that. And not that Andrew Morgan is the most athletic guy in the world, but I think he, he's maybe a, a step down from Josiah Alec and a step up from rink mass in terms of, you know, vertical leaping ability. I think he's a pretty good middle ground in rebounding as well. He, he's capable. He's solid. Not a guy that you, you trust to just patrol the glass alone. But I think he fits the the team rebounding kind of ethos Nebraska is going for. Positional defender, he'll play the four, probably probably the five as well. Um, not the passer that Rink Mast is, but um, also smoother, I think, in the post and with his moves than Josiah Alec is. So I think this is a nice little pickup for Nebraska. Does it help in terms of raising the ceiling? Eh, remains to be seen. This is... In my estimation right now, as we sit here on, on April 8th, just you know, a handful of hours removed from his commitment to, to join Nebraska out of the transfer portal, this feels par for the course. It really does. Not a good thing. Not a bad thing, right? It's just this is the type of player that, that Fred Hoiberg and his staff have chosen to target here um, you know, in, in the last few years, especially out, out of the transfer portal and in recruiting. So I think that's just a solid, you know, Seven out of ten pickup. He'll play play some key roles. He'll he'll win some games. He won't make a difference in others. Um, Nebraska ball fan on the text line. Thanks for chiming in. Do you think Nebraska will still go after Pharrell Payne after getting this commitment? I don't know. I can give you the argument for it and the argument against it. So the argument for it is that Nebraska still needs a true enforcer. I don't know how great Pharrell Payne is on defense, but he's a better rim protector than I think Nebraska has had on a consistent basis recently. Um, If Nebraska were to go get him, I think that would mean the guards would be able to be a little more aggressive on the perimeter, pressure the ball a little more because you do have a physical presence in there, a great rebounder. Um, He's a little limited though. And I mean that respectfully because what he does, he's pretty good at, but I don't think Pharrell Payne has an elite skill and he's not necessarily versatile. He's not a pick and pop big man. Yeah, I, I, he he can guard okay on the perimeter, but you still don't feel great about it. I think Pharrell Payne is a very Big Ten style big that would help Nebraska get through the grind of a Big Ten regular season. But again, I don't know if that's necessarily 
a ceiling raiser um, of a player. If Nebraska is still going to go after a you know traditional center, Cliff Amori is tops on my list. Absolutely. I go get Cliff Amori eight days out of seven, 11 times out of 10 before Pharrell Payne. Amori's a walking double-double, you know, plays with motor. Um, they're similar, but Amori's a little more athletic, maybe not as, as muscle-bound as Payne is, but, but plenty strong enough. I, I just like Amori's game a little bit better. Even if he's limited, I think there's just a little bit more he can do and offer Nebraska. So I'm not mad if Nebraska continues to um, remain in contact with Pharrell Payne, but I really hope they're talking to uh, Cliff Amori before they're talking to Pharrell Payne. Other thing I want to get to on the college basketball front before our last segment of the show. So Evan Miyakawa on Twitter at Evan Mia. Really interesting Twitter account. A lot of data, a lot of numbers for those of you who want to sink your teeth into college basketball. Um, tweeted this out today. Um, his big stat is kill shots in college basketball. What is that? It's a 10 nothing run by a team. So what teams go on 10 nothing runs and what teams allow 10 nothing runs? If you look at the NCAA tournament teams, um, Northwestern, Texas Tech, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina State, allowed a lot of 10 nothing runs without scoring many themselves. Teams that both went on and allowed a lot of 10 nothing runs, Alabama, James Madison, Texas, TCU, Colorado. Dependable teams, not very streaky, not a lot of 10 nothing runs. Duke, Wisconsin, Clemson, Tennessee's right down there. Um, Florida, Mississippi State. Nebraska's kind of right in the middle of all of this. Goes on its fair share, allows its fair share of 10 nothing runs. Um, but the strongest teams are the ones that go on the most 10 nothing runs and allow the fewest 10 nothing runs. Team that was best at that this year was Houston. We know they got bounced uh, by Duke. Other teams there include UConn, who's playing tonight. Um, it goes on a lot of 10 nothing runs, doesn't allow many of themselves, and Purdue somewhere in the middle. Purdue definitely, definitely, definitely goes on more 10 nothing scoring runs than it allows. But Purdue, at least according to the NCAA tournament field, goes on a barely above average number of 10 nothing runs. So here's this from Evan Miyakawa. Purdue is now the least likely team in the country to surrender a kill shot, a 10 nothing run. Purdue has not given up a 10 nothing run since February 15th. That's darn near two months ago now that Purdue hasn't been outscored 10 to nothing over any stretch of time. That's incredible for a team that's pretty solid defensively, but it doesn't scream elite. Now here's the flip side of that stat. UConn, since February 15th, has gone on 12 10 nothing runs, recorded 12 kill shots. That's pretty darn good. Not tops in the country, but definitely up there. We know basketball is a game of runs. Stricky said it. Other people with, with basketball minds better than mine have said it. Basketball is a game of runs. Who manages them the best? Purdue hasn't given up 10 nothing runs. UConn goes on 10 nothing runs among the best in the country. That's another little statistical matchup to watch tonight. We'll send you over to NCAA tournament pregame coverage starting at 630 here on our radio airwaves. Our local programming and content will remain on the streams all night. One segment to go here during old school. I'm Austin Norman. Come right back. You're listening to old school with DP and J. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Put lawn irrigation on automatic. Think Judson Irrigation for worry-free service to Lincoln homeowners and business community. Judson Irrigation will turn on your sprinkler system in the spring, repair or redesign as needed, and turn it off in the fall. For service to orphan sprinklers, remember Judson Irrigation. They'll never forget you. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Okay, it's time to sell the house. How do we even begin to choose from the hundreds of realtors in town? Easy. We make a pros list. You mean a pros and cons list? No, just a pros list. We need someone with pro photography to showcase the house in the best possible way. Pro marketing to make sure we get maximum exposure. Pro negotiations so we know we get the best price. This is one of those times where you already know the right answer, isn't it? You know it is. Ben Bleicher and Professional Realty Group. Contact Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Services Ambassador online 
online at prg-ne.com. Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fear's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter, or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fear's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Iron High Construction is higher. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron High Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and a rector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron High Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com where they're committed to you every step of the way. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Haverhill. This week's special through April 9th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $1.50 off all Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauces. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Empower a child today with a teammate's mentoring program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the teammate's mentoring program today. Oh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk, coffee, and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. Be a memory for your grandchildren. Among Nebraska adults age 65 or older, 47% report current alcohol use. Drinking too much can cause harm to children, family members, and loved ones. By drinking less, you will still be around for your grandchildren. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Power Combo BOGO? Huh? Yes. If you purchase an air conditioner, you receive a furnace completely free. At John Henry's, our professionals want to ensure you are comfortable in your home all year long, no matter what Nebraska has to throw at us. Call today to schedule your free estimate and learn more about the free furnace waiting for you. Give John Henry's a call today. 435-5555. John Henry's Plumbing. Heating and electrical. Back to old school with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Not much time left here during old school. Big thanks to the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese for their sponsorship of our show here from 4 to 6. I'm Austin Norman. As I mentioned, about half an hour away from getting you out to the National Championship game in Phoenix, UConn versus Purdue. Not only have we been your home for March Madness, we're Lincoln's home with the Royals. That's right. Kansas City Royals fans, stand up. Send me a crown emoji on the text line, 402-464-5685. All my Royals fans out there, uh, let me know. Let me know who you are. Uh, They're off today before they uh, start a homestand series against Houston. Uh, so they'll be back on the airwaves tomorrow. But through 10 games, Royals are 6-4, and four, uh, Pythagorean record of 7-3, and three, outscoring teams 44-25 to 25 here through the first few series of the year. And they've done it with starting pitching. Not something they could have said last year at all, but of course they make the, the additions of Seth Lugo and Michael Waka in free agency. Uh, they get Cole Reagans to start the year, Brady Singer as the fourth starter, and then Alec Marsh, beat out last year's fifth starter, Jordan Lyles. And then the other guy in that competition was Daniel Lynch. So Jordan Lyles has been moved to the bullpen for the Royals. He allowed a lot of home runs, lost, I think, 15, 16 straight starts last year. It was wretched. It was terrible. But he's been better in the bullpen this year. Daniel Lynch down in Omaha just hasn't fully put it together. So Alec Marsh uh, in the fifth starter spot, 
But the group as a whole, that entire starting rotation, ranks first in the AL Central in innings pitched, opponents batting average, walks and hits per innings pitched, and quality starts. Wait, first in the AL Central, I meant first in the AL. Wait, no, just kidding. I mean first in baseball. The Kansas City Royals, starting rotation, leads Major League Baseball in innings pitched, opponents batting average against, walks and hits per innings pitched, and quality starts. Out of 10 games the Royals have played, eight quality starts. Michael Walker in his first start only went five and a third, gave up three runs, and then Alec March yesterday uh, only made it into the fifth inning. So those are the only two guys to you know not have two quality starts through two starts. Lights out starting pitching from the Royals. So eight quality starts, only six wins. Bullpen's blown it a couple times, but the starting rotation's been great. Uh, second in all of baseball in earned run average at just a, a 1.6 mark. And then third in all of baseball um, in allowing home runs. Only three home runs allowed by Royal starting pitchers through 10 games, but also 58 strikeouts by the starters. Cole Reagans had a, a Royals opening day record, nine strikeouts uh, in, in the opening day game for the Royals against the Twins that they ended up losing. It's been kind of tough luck for, for Cole Reagans here. He's been masterful his first two times um, on the bump, but uh, he's kind of getting the Zach Greinke treatment where he'll pitch lights out, he'll pitch stellar, but then the offense doesn't back him up. Uh, 41-48, appreciate you, Royals fan. Stand up, thanks for texting in. Uh, Henry, Big Bang Hank, tip of the cap there. Try to figure out who that is. 31, oh, that's Ian Kennedy. That is Ian Kennedy tipping the cap there, Big Bang Hank. Appreciate you guys, uh, my Royals fans, standing up here with me. Royals back on your airwaves tomorrow, taking on Houston. Again, it'll be Cole Reagans on the bump. You won't want to miss that. That'll do it for me here in the 93.7 The Ticket Studios. Been a good show. Covered a lot of college basketball. Uh, some college football debate here and there as well. Heard from Jay Foreman, uh, his thoughts on the quarterback debate for Nebraska football. Looking at the three guys that spoke to the media last week. A little college basketball, a little baseball to end things off. Don't go anywhere. We've got the national championship game between UConn and Purdue airing. Harrison Arns in for ticket weeknights as well. If you want to listen to your 93.7 The Ticket and now normal content, keep it tuned to the streams. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Allo Channel 961. That'll have all your uh, content that originates here from 1040 O Street. For Strick, for Jay, for DP, I'm Austin Norman. Thanks for listening today. It's been a blast. Take a weeknight. It comes your way next.